Now to China, where a city in the southwest is rocked by powerful blasts. This after a fireworks factory exploded. But eyewitness videos seem to contradict what the authorities are saying. NTD's Tiffany Meyer brings us more. Powerful explosion shook a fireworks factory in the southwest Chinese city of Guanghan on Wednesday night. Authorities say at least six people were injured, with zero reported deaths. But residents have doubts. Local authorities say their investigation is still ongoing. According to images broadcast by Chinese state-run media, fireballs and yellow clouds rose into the air after the blast, and thick black smoke poured out from the plant. An aerial photography taken the following day shows the whole factory had turned to rubble. The building roofs had also been blasted away. One part of the factory had burned down completely. Another video shows the power of the massive explosion. The windows of nearby buildings were also shattered. The explosion even impacted houses and buildings located over a mile away. According to residents, there were three explosions. Locals say the blast caused dozens of deaths and injured many. We could not independently verify this information. Now to China's widespread flooding. Landslides hit the southwestern province of Guizhou on Wednesday due to heavy rains and loose soil. Four villages and over 500 people were affected. Many are still missing. One villager told us that the whole village was nearly buried by mud. Only three of four houses remained standing. Many people were later dug out of the mud, but showed no signs of life. Others were washed away by flood water. Thousands of acres of farmland are also flooded. Likewise, the landslide destroyed large parts of the highway and caused a power outage. Even a mountain has broken apart. Many residents urgently evacuated. The owner of a restaurant close to one of the four affected villages says local officials have already taken control of the village. No one is allowed to enter and taking photos is forbidden. He added he doesn't know the specifics. The casualties are not allowed to be talked about. It is not allowed. We call the health center closest to that village. Staff members said the situation there is dire. The majority of the center's doctors went to the village to help, but no injured people were sent back to the health center for treatment. Villagers nearby say they've heard ambulance sirens ringing, but it's unclear which hospital the wounded are taken to. And elsewhere in southeastern China, the Wuyi mountain area has also been drenched by heavy rainstorms. One video shows some houses are almost completely submerged by the flooding. Cars were also washed away. A highway also collapsed, causing major traffic disruption. The monkeys that often visit the village were seen crouching on the bridge to avoid danger. Jiangxi province has also suffered from the floods. A local resident told us that the area's water level has exceeded the overflow warning level by about 10 feet. The water has risen so high that the river bank has been flooded, and in some places the river embankment collapsed. Local crops are also soaked. While in central China's Hubei province, this week at least two rivers overflowed. The breach has since reached 130 feet. According to Chinese state-run media, over 6,000 people have been evacuated, with over 2,000 acres of farmland impacted. Police say one of South Korea's most prominent elected officials, the longtime mayor of its capital, has been found dead. His daughter reported him missing just as he was facing a criminal complaint against him. After a search involving hundreds of police, Mayor Park won soons body was found at Mount Bugok in northern Seoul around midnight. His phone signal had last been detected nearby, the Seoul Metropolitan Police Agency said. It did not give a cause of death. A police official told reporters there was no sign of foul play, but a detailed investigation would be needed. The police received a missing person report of Seoul Mayor Park Won Soon from his family member at around 5.17 p.m. on July 9th and carried out a massive search for about seven hours. He was found dead inside the forested hills of Mount Bugak in Seongboku at around 12.01 a.m. on July 10th. 
The Yonhap news agency said a former secretary of Park had filed a complaint on Wednesday over alleged incidents of sexual harassment. Choi said an investigation was underway after a criminal complaint had been lodged against Park, without elaborating. Up next, Amazon says it will require sellers in the U.S. to list their names and addresses publicly. It could help combat counterfeiting. Online retailers could need as much as 1 billion more square feet of warehouse space in the next five years as people make more purchases online. That and more when we return. Starting September 1st, Amazon will no longer allow anonymous sellers in the U.S. All third-party sellers must display their business name and address on their seller profile. This has long been required in Europe, Japan and Mexico and will now start in the U.S., Amazon's oldest and biggest marketplace. Amazon will require third-party sellers in the U.S. to publicly list their names and addresses starting September 1st. Amazon's marketplace accounts for about half of the company's overall sales. In a statement, Amazon said the change is about consistency and transparency. Consumers will be able to make informed shopping decisions. Amazon said it spent $500 million last year fighting fraud, abuse, and counterfeit products. It also launched the Project Zero initiative, which introduced a variety of tools to combat counterfeiting. Earlier this year, the company started verifying seller identities through video call. They claim to have taken down 2.5 million accounts and shut down 6 billion suspicious listings. These actions come after constant pressure from the Trump administration and lawmakers to crack down on online fraud. In January, the Department of Homeland Security released a 54-page report on combating counterfeits, singling out online marketplaces like Amazon. Sellers were already required to provide their information to Amazon, but this new rule will make it public to buyers as well. This will reduce the wide selection of products Amazon is known for, but will filter out fraudulent listings. While demand for traditional real retail real estate is shrinking during the pandemic, demand for another kind of space is growing. That is warehouses. With more and more people making purchases online, demand for industrial real estate could add 1 billion square feet in five years. The U.S. may need an additional 1 billion square feet of warehouse space by 2025, as online commerce continues to boom during the pandemic. This is according to commercial real estate services firm JLL. The company told CNBC about half of its leasing activity is now related to online shopping, compared to about 35 percent before COVID-19. One fast-growing trend is online grocery shopping, which has prompted the demand for cold storage. JLL predicts an additional 100 million square feet of cold storage facilities will be needed to keep up with the growing demand. A real estate investment firm estimates for each $1 billion of online sales, companies would need 1.2 million square feet of storage space. Due to the growing demand in storage space and shrinking of traditional retail, some developers are converting traditional malls into logistics centers. Google has reportedly abandoned its plans to offer new cloud service in China and some other countries. It sheds light on challenges U.S. tech companies face in countries that keep a tight control over their user data. Bloomberg News reports that Google canceled plans to offer a new cloud service in China and some other politically sensitive countries. It cited two employees familiar with the matter. The project was shut down in May, and the employees said that's partly due to geopolitical tensions and the pandemic. But a Google spokeswoman denied the reasons. She also said Google isn't weighing options to offer a cloud platform in China. In China, foreign cloud service providers have to partner up with a local company. In such a relationship, the partner company will keep control over user data. The scrapped initiative was part of a larger project called Sharded Google. The goal of this project is to create data infrastructure that's fully walled off from the rest of the company's network. Google is trying to expand its presence in cloud computing. Last year, Google Cloud generated nearly $9 billion in revenue. That's more than a 50% increase compared to the previous year. 
Tesla's CEO Elon Musk says the company is very close to developing a fully autonomous driving system. He says he's confident it can be done before the end of the year. Electric car maker Tesla is very close to achieving level 5 autonomous driving technology. This is according to its CEO Elon Musk. Level 5 means a car is able to navigate roads without driver input. I remain confident that uh, we will have the, the functionality for the basic functionality for level 5 autonomy uh, complete this year. Musk made the remarks in a video message at a tech conference in China. There are six levels of autonomous driving, with level zero being no automation. Level five is full automation, where a car operates by itself without input from a human driver. Automakers and tech companies, including Alphabet's Waymo and Uber, are investing billions in the autonomous driving industry. The California-based automaker currently builds cars with an autopilot driver assistance system. Industry data showed Tesla sold nearly 15,000 China-made Model 3 sedans last month. It's become the highest valued automaker. Tesla shares surged to record highs and its market capitalization surpassed Toyota's.